You're watching Deprogrammed. My name's Harrison Pitt. I'm a senior editor at the European Conservative, and I'm thrilled to be joined today, as ever, by Evan Riggs, who is a freelance journalist and a man who will need no introduction, Peter Hitchens, columnist for the Mail on Sunday. Now, uh, Peter, uh, Evan and I were interested recently to see that um, the Scottish government was piling pressure on Westminster uh, uh, to legalise all drugs for personal use. Uh, this must have has, this must have demor demoralised you as someone who. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's it, it's constant. There is uh, marijuana in this country, particularly, is a cult. Drug taking is a cult of the of, of the new post Beatles world. Uh, I used to say that when I was at the University of York in the 1970s, now 50 years ago, that Harriet Harman and I were probably the only people there who didn't smoke dope. An entire generation of educated people grew up with the idea that the taking of drugs was a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Uh, and not merely reasonable, but that it improved life and it expanded their, their, their consciousness and in general uh, made them better people. This is what they believe. They've grown up with it. Many of them have continued to do so into later life and many of them allow their children to do it. And I should say almost every part of the establishment of this country north and south of the Scottish border uh, is very much infected by this view. And it's completely impervious to any sort of evidence. It's utterly, utterly uninterested in the, in the growing disaster uh, of particularly of mental health problems among the users of marijuana. And it will, and it will not understand that the law of the, the laws which existed in the up to the middle 1960s uh, under which the possession of drugs was prosecuted and seriously treated long ago ceased to exist. Most of them just simply don't know this and they will say, you can hear them saying it a mile off, they start saying, the war on drugs has, and you, you know this, failed. And once someone starts any conversation with those words, you know you're dealing with an ignoramus. Now the Scottish Government, f fascinatingly, uh, must know that w within its jurisdiction, for many, many years now, the police and the courts have de facto decriminalised mm -hmm. the, the possession of most drugs. But they don't seem to put this together with the fact that they also have rather horrible, very high death rates from drug abuse in Scotland. Some of the highest in Europe. They blame it on a non-existent enforcement of the law, which they themselves must know they're not enforcing. Yes. This gives you an, 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 an inkling yes. of the double think of the establishment on this subject. Uh, uh, why this gets so much publicity, I don't know, because after it's not as if the Scottish government uh, especially since the COVID panic, and it had any influence over the government and the rest of the country. But there it is. It's been mm -hmm. another uh, pretext for broadcasting organisations, particularly from whom I've been hearing incessantly in the past few days. Will I come on and talk about this? Because it's yet another chance for mm -hmm. them to press what is actually a large-scale media campaign. And this is completely mysterious because, as we know, nobody in the media takes drugs. Uh, but this is a large-scale media campaign uh, for drug legalisation. And I refuse to go on most of these programs because I say, look, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be your Ofcom fig leaf, the one person <laughs> in the whole program who's here to say this is a bad idea so that you can then tell Ofcom that you balanced it. Uh, and I, I tend to be pretty firm, say only if you give me a reasonable chance to make the point. Uh, and either the first word or the last word in the matter, will I do it? And that's, so it, it reduces greatly the number of these demands, yeah. but it is a real problem. Uh, there is a, if, if the, if the independent society of tiddlywink manufacturers produces a report calling for marijuana legalization, it will lead bulletins on the BBC. Mm. If anybody comes up with a, an actual report showing that the correlation between marijuana use and mental illness is becoming deeply alarming, or if my friend Ross Granger uh, promotes or attempts to promote his website called Attack of Smoke Cannabis, in which he instances from an assiduous reading of local newspapers, the number of criminal cases in which violence is committed by people who are, who, who are known to be under the influence of marijuana or who are long-term users of it, that won't get any coverage because it goes the wrong way. There is an enormous preponderance in our culture uh, of support for legalization of drugs and that's why you're talking about it now. Why do you think people are so hesitant to acknowledge the reality that marijuana can be addictive and psychologically harmful? Well, it can't be addictive because there's no such thing as addiction, but leaving that to one side, because it's probably so for an, another day's controversy, uh, I think the reason why they don't want to know it is because so many of them have themselves used it, because so many of them have let their children use it, uh, because 
where this has produced tragedies, which it ha has, and I'll come an interesting instance of this if you let me in a moment, where this has produced tragedies, they've tended to resist the, the, uh, the, the, the drug angle. logical conclusion of it. Uh, and also because they're afraid of being accused of hypocrisy. It's a major feature, particularly among politicians, that, that if any, uh, you may remember, probably don't, you're so young, some years ago, Anne Whitaker came out with some very, very mild strengthening of the laws against marijuana, uh, while the Tory party was in opposition, and they were at a conference in Bournemouth. And I've written about this in, in, in my book, The War We Never Fought. Almost immediately, as if organized, of course it can't have been, can it, uh, members of the shadow cabinet uh, started giving interviews saying, no, well, I used marijuana when I was at university, over and over and over again, as if this was in some way an argument against making the laws tougher. And it was sabotaged from, from there on. It, it destroyed Anne Whittacombe's uh, political career, pretty much, that, that event. But there is this huge fear that if they, if they actually introduce more serious laws for the, for the prosecution, or well, indeed if they, if they insist on the use of the existing laws, which they don't use, uh, then they will be accused of hypocrisy and people will emerge out of their distant past saying, oh, I remember uh, when such and such a minister was at university, I remember smoking dope. Then. So they're afraid of that. That's one reason. But the other is that, as I say, that it, it is a cult. Uh, it's, it's, um, have you read Revolution in the Head? I can't remember the name of the author. It's a fantastic book about all the Beatles songs and their actual meaning and impact. And he says particularly one song, Come Together, was a kind of encapsulation of an entire new world and cultural revolution in which drugs were acceptable. Alan Bloom is also very good on this in The Closing of the American Mind, where he, he equates uh, rock music and drugs with, a, with a, a collapse of the old previous Protestant idea of, of reward following effort. Uh, which has generally come to an end. It's not just a, the pleasure of taking drugs. It's a whole new moral system which they represent. And any attempt to, to curb or, or, or push back that new moral revolution is resisted furiously. Hmm. I mean, um, okay. When you were a revolutionary Trotskyist, yeah. back in, well, it would have been the late 1960s, late early, 1960s early, and 19, early 1970s, yeah. early 1970s is drug decriminalization the sort of cause that you would have hitched your wagon, wasn't wagon first, to? No, we were Bolsheviks, and as Bolsheviks we, 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 we very much were, uh, 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 well, some of us were not, but in general the, the, the sect to which I belong, the International Socialist, although it did have its, uh, its dope heads, I have no doubt, uh, was much more puritanical about and this. And also as a general rule among serious revolutionaries, you don't give the police an occasion <laughs> yes. to prosecute you uh, that, that, that would, would hamper the yes. work. The our rival group, the International Marxist Group, on the other hand, uh, was a swirl with, uh, with, with dope as far as one Is that the see. one that was led by Tariq Ali? Uh, that's the one which was yes. led by Tariq Ali, um, and, who okay. himself, I think, was, it had nothing to do with it. I, I, I interviewed him a few years ago on this very <laughs> subject, but who was very much aware of it going on. So no, it wasn't, certainly wasn't something that, that my lot wanted, uh, though I think it might have been something that, that other lots. And the IMG was actually uh, probably the most successful of the Trotskyist sects because it merged into the Labour Party. And it became you, you, this astonishing numbers of, of senior figures in Blairite Labour yes. who were IMG uh, graduates. Uh, how seriously sh should we take then Humza Yusuf's uh, move on this front? Because I mean, a huge part of the SNP's raison d'etre is is it, it, anything it can do to present Scotland as the David to the great Goliath of, oh, well, that, of Westminster, that, that, they're going to try to do. We'll take that for granted, but yes. I, I don't, what are you going to do about it? Do you think that, do you think that this will cause um, a, a, a important political cleavages there between Hollywood and Westminster? No, no, it's just, it's, 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 West no, it's, it won't, it won't, no one will care about it at all, because it's not as if the government of, of, of uh, the United Kingdom, or indeed the government of England, is immensely tough on, on, on the, the uh, on the application, the enforcement of the drug laws. Mm. On the contrary, they, they're pretty much exactly the same as Scotland. They don't enforce them, and they haven't enforced them for years, and they believe in not enforcing them. You have to understand, this country is bound by its adherence to the UN Single Drugs Convention of, I think, 1961, uh, to have on its statute books penalties for, for, for drug abuse of various kinds, and that's the mm. basis, one of the bases of the Misuse of Drugs Act of 1971. And as a member of the United Nations Security Council, we really can't go around not in, in, in actually ignoring major UN obligations such as that. So, but what the drug legalizations realized, drug legalization campaigners, what the drug legalization campaigners realized long ago, is that, it, that they could achieve their ends by persuading jurisdictions to stop <coughs> enforcing the law. 
In the United States, this was largely achieved by, by classifying marijuana as a medicine, mm. uh, though other things were also done. And, and now it's, it's accelerated to the second stage where large numbers of states of the Union uh, actually have, have legalized its use. Uh, but you'll notice that the federal government still continues to maintain the fiction that marijuana is illegal, which causes some problems with the use of credit cards in marijuana stores in Col Colorado, uh, but otherwise doesn't really get much in the way. But this is because the federal government, rather than the states, is the signatory to the Single Drugs Convention. So to the extent that there's a political battle at all in there this country, one. it's one between de facto decriminalization and de jure. Yes, well, de jure is coming. There is, a, there is a huge international campaign, very well funded by the usual suspects, uh, to get rid of the Single Drugs Convention. And when that comes, if it comes, which I fear it will, then legalization will follow hard on its heels. And if you thought big tobacco was bad, you really have seen nothing when big dope actually really yeah. moves in uh, to Western societies with the power to and freedom to advertise its products. Y yeah, I might terrifying. Be, I might be pre preaching to uh, our choir here, but as a Canadian whose country has federally legalized marijuana, which has basically hollowed out the city that I went to university in. There's now more head shops than gyms, I think. Which city are you Victoria, talking about? British Columbia. Right. Yeah, pothead capital of the world. Um, I would highly caution people against thinking that this is um, mm. something that you want to invite upon yourself because I, I, for me personally, I think if people want to smoke weed every once in a while, it's probably okay. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a that. habit of it. But people can't help make a habit of it once it's pressed upon them constantly. Well, there is that. I mean, the, the thing about the Canadian experiment, so-called, is that is the legalization did take place, and you can now buy marijuana legally in Canada, but the, the constantly repeated claim of the legalizers that once you legalize it, it will take it out of the hands of the criminal gangs. Yeah, it's that was false. True. In the, 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 the illegal market continues to flourish because, of course, it can evade the taxes and it can evade any regulation which anyone proposes to put on it. So th this is a myth, so now you have an illegal market and a, and a legal market alongside each other, so it's worse. But very interestingly, if you study one of the really biggest campaigns for legalization in the United States, in California, Proposition 64, which I think went through about five years ago now, mm -hmm. one of its key, you have to, it's a very long document, one of its key uh, d demands was that they should be allowed to advertise. Mm. And remember the, well, don't you don't remember, I remember the, the half century struggle in this country to control and eventually end the advertising of cigarettes. Uh, and the, the enormous resistance of this, not just from big tobacco, but of course from various parts of the government, which couldn't see where they were going to get the revenue from. Because once you legalize an evil product and tax it, then the government becomes complicit in the evil. And, and, and once, once governments all over the Western world are complicit in the evil of, 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 of marketing and, 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 sp and spreading marijuana through society, mm -hmm. it will be incredibly hard to reverse. There's so, so much vested interest in it. Yeah, it's very interesting. I, it, it's interesting you mentioned Canada because I had a little look before coming here today on uh, rates per 100,000 of drug deaths in countries, you know, d depending on whatever regimes they have. And in 1990, Scotland had a, had a, had a, a death rate of 1.3 per 100,000. That was in 1990, whereas today it's as high as nine. And in places like South Korea and Japan, which I think I'm right in saying you prefer their um, drug regime, uh, it's 0.27 and 0.16, and Canada is also incredibly high on that list as it's well. Skyrocketing, yeah. And, it's, and you, you see that those countries are ticking up, whereas the, it's pretty constant for South Korea and Japan for the last 30 years in terms of the, their rates of drug death. They're under great pressure, of course, to change. And the, the medical marijuana people are hard at work in both in both South Korea and uh, and Japan, trying to undermine it. And how long they'll be able to maintain it, I don't know. But it's quite what what is so often said in this argument is the 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 decriminalists will say, well, prohibition, as they call it, uh, with a deliberate attempt to, to to smear it with the name of a, of a known failure. Prohibition won't work. Yes. And I said, well, actually, as a matter of fact, what you call prohibition does work. And I point out to Japan, and South Korea, and then they start saying, oh, that's cultural in what is basically a racist uh, response. No, they're, they're what do you think they mean by that? Well, they 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 I, think, I think they're just basically, well, they're the Japanese and the South Koreans, aren't they? The brackets, they're not like us. They're more obedient, basically, more pliable, basically it's a racist, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a racist defense. And they get very cross if I point that out to them. But that is what it is, it seems to me, because it's quite, these are advanced modern, you know, you, you've presumably been to them, I have. I, Japan is, is one of the most advanced modern countries in the world. It's a law governed democracy. And it's not one of these Asian states which, which had death penalties for drugs and there's nonsense like that. It, it, it simply has serious penalties 
for possession, which it enforces, and it also has, and this is a result of this uh, of this enforcement, there's still a strong public resistance to the idea of drug taking among, say, public figures. Mm. If you're a public figure who's found in possession of drugs in Japan, it means big trouble for your career, which of course is no longer the case here. Yes, unless, unless you're, yeah. Okay. The cult law drives culture. If you have a law which, is, which, which punishes and discourages the use of drugs, your culture will be the same. In this country, I'm now one of the few people still alive who remembers, in this country before the drug laws were diluted, uh, the, the anti-drug culture in the country was yes. very strong. And, you, and, you, and I, think if I'm right, I think I'm right in saying that you uh, locate a, a very important cultural watershed in Mick Jagger's experience with drugs in, 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 the, in the 1960s, where all of a sudden that, that sort of pu punitive cultural regime that Britain had, as you say, you know, undergirded by law, seemed to be it, wearing away. It was a significant moment. The, the, the Jagger case is itself quite complicated. And the, it, what it really revolves around, as I found later, because I wrote in my, f my first book, The Abolition of Britain, about the Jagger case, uh, partly because it took place mm. in, in West Wittering, the apparently innocent seaside town where I used to do bucket and spade holidays in my childhood. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's the, the, the real case was, um, was, was the Hoppy Hopkins case of, I think, uh, would have been 1967, who was a well-known uh, character on the, the London scene, mm. uh, who was arrested. And uh, there was a lot of outrage uh, among drug users, marijuana users, about this arrest and, hi and his imprisonment. And that resulted in the famous full-page advertisement in the Times, signed by all four Beatles, uh, all citing their MBEs when they did it, and David Dibbleby and Graham Greene and Ronnie Lang, the psychiatrist, and a whole band of the great and the good saying, we have, no, this is, is quite wrong, we should be continuing to treat this drug as dangerous. And the Wooden Report, which followed, and the 1971 Misuse of Drugs Act, which followed that, actually did pay a lot of attention to that campaign and began the long period of de facto decriminalization, which we, which we now experience. You, you, as we leave this building and walk around London, mm. we'll be lucky if we don't s smell the stink of cannabis in our nostrils at some point on the way, because London, not as bad as New York City now, but is certainly a, a city where the, the use of marijuana is out of control. I'll confess to, though I no longer smoke any weed, I still do like the scent of it. It doesn't bother me maybe as much. But if we can bring it on to a, a, a more modern vice here, what do you make of the, the vaping craze? Because I personally can't stand it. I'd probably like to see it uh, taken down in the same way. Well, I don't after know. I have, I have to stick to one subject. I mean, what, I was, <laughs> what I would say about anything, uh, I, I did, in, uh, and this is, this is the fruit of a long life as much as anything else, anything which gives people pleasure, they shouldn't be surprised if it exacts a penalty later on. I don't think we know enough about vaping to be to be sure that it's safe. I think it's it's really rather risky for health authorities to recommend it as an alternative to smoking. But I say it's I can't really get involved in that because I've I've got one thing I have to fight, and I'd rather stick to it. It's interesting though because I mean I I was looking at some. Um, some breakdowns of support for drug legalization by age. And as people might expect, younger people are much more in favor of decriminalization and legalization. Although interestingly, 18 to 24 year olds are less in favor than 25 to 49 year olds. There may be all sorts of reasons for that. But one thing that well, I, I thought the greatest enthusiasts for drug legalization were elderly Tories. <laughs> <laughs> it's extraordinary. I was, was, was once in the middle of Not making, a, no, making a, a television program about David Cameron. And it was yeah. arranged that I should I should meet this, this group of elderly Tories in. <laughs> In, in Windsor it was, and yes. I, I remember we talked about a number of things, and then the subject of drugs came out, and every single one of them, these mustachioed retired colonels and, 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 and WI ladies, uh, they, all, they were all hugely in favor of, yes. uh, which I think was because they were readers of the Daily Telegraph. A newspaper people wrongly think is conservative. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I, I haven't interacted with such people. Maybe I should. Well, I the, the evening did not end well. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet it, I bet it didn't. But it, especially disappointing, I found, is how many young people uh, like operating in this right wing conservative media space, so to speak, how many young people who call themselves conservatives but are really just metrosexual libertarians are, are radically in favor of this stuff because they think that conservatism, to the extent that it's a, com a commitment to anything, is a commitment to just expanding the 
the empire of maximal autonomy and 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 you well, know, that's not conservative. Exactly, really. there's something else entirely. But it, 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 it's but the they read Milton the Freeman's free to choose, and they, well, and, they, and, they and they make that assumption. That's back. not conservatism either. Quite, is it? but, yeah. the, but, but my, people my, got to mix it up. The, the, the yes. disastrous legacy of the Thatcher Reagan era, in which people thought that both those politicians were conservative. Exactly. And neither, neither of them were conservative. But the, my question was going to be: How do you reach people whose who um, whose ideological priors seem to make them so unreachable? I don't know. On the, spiritualism, on possibly. I have no idea. I, 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 I don't expect to reach people. I think that okay. the, the ba ba these battles are all lost. Okay. But I do think that, that you should go down fighting. Okay. Well, let me hear you explain then, because I, mean, I, I, why you think that it is not a conservative thing to be devoted purely to freedom as a, as a, as a, as a matter well, of principle. Well, because as Karl Marx rightly said, no man fights freedom. He fights most of the freedom of others. You cannot make freedom into a dogma. Mm -hmm. Freedoms conflict. Uh, you have to decide which freedoms you you wish to protect and, uh, against other other freedoms, and if you and, and the, if you're a conservative, you will have to protect some freedoms against others. I mean, the, 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 particularly the freedom of the of the uh, of the married family to flourish is very fundamental, and uh, I have to say, widespread drug use is a grave enemy of that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it freedom is only ever a, a path. It's not. It's not an end unto itself. Um, I wonder why you think, it's kind of shocking to me coming from uh, across the Atlantic, why so many kind of Tories or, or you know, conservatives in name only in this country are, are terrified to speak about this country in cultural terms. They feel like they can only make economic arguments. I mean, I'm sure legalizing pot would you know, bring in plenty of money, but what it would do to the, the culture and kind of stability of the city that we're in, I think, would be a massive detriment. But nobody seems confident in making that argument except for yourself. Why and do you think that is? Would you remember the coelacanth? No. It's a fish, which was thought to be extinct. And uh, sometime in the 1950s, one was caught and dragged up from the deepest depths of the oceans. I am that coelacanth. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I, am, I am extinct, but I, but I, still, I still live and breathe. I, I was brought up in another world, and I still have. I was brought up in, in conservative ways by conservative people in a conservative country, and yeah. all these things are still recognizable to me. Yeah. But if you weren't, how would you know? I mean, what th these people have been brought up to believe that, that Thatcherism was conservative. All the enemies of conservatism think Thatcher was conservative, as well as the conservative party, so called. Where would you find out? Where would you ever have heard the, 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 the departing music and beauty of a properly conservative society if you never lived in one? I, I speak for something that's gone. I, it's not. It, it, it's not there anymore. I watched it go. I had one of the most amazing experiences I still remember is that of them coming in. I, this came too late for me, both in in mathematics and history. They came in, and they took away the old books, and they said, "From now on, this is the history you're going to be learning." But I'd already learned all the 1066 stuff that I knew, and it was no good telling me that it was yes. the, that it was a kind of uh, history of social democratic advance. That 1945 was the greatest state in English history because I knew better, and it, it, it was just too late for me. And I am probably the last living survivor of it. Yes, mm, that the, do you not think that there might be some hope that the the past is a, a future country in a sense, and no. the rising rates of conservatism among the youth? People never thought Brexit you, would but, happen. But, but you just, uh, what, I mean, you just said that they're, they're not conservative. They, they, well, they, 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 they identify yeah. as conservative as a label. They're not actually conservative. They don't know how to be I said, conservative. I, I said that's true. Of, I said that's true of a, a, a good many of them that you meet, particularly the sort of ones that work in uh, the Adam Smith Institute or the IEA. But recently, Evan and I were both at a um, at a at a conference just opposite the road at the Emmanuel Centre, yeah, I heard about the that National conference. Conservatism Conference, and you would have been. You, I, think, I was I think fascinated by the fact that nobody invited. Yeah, me well, to I was also surprised. They, they knew, but they knew. They knew you'd, <laughs> they knew <laughs> they knew you'd be that I dark wouldn't cloud. Fit in. I'd be the coelacanth <laughs> swimming around <laughs> among the goldfish. You'd be, you'd, be, you'd, be you'd be surprised by how well liked you are, and not just you as a personality, but your work is among some of the younger people in attendance. There. It was it was it was very it was very mixed demographic. Why do they why do they want to go and listen to Suella Braverman then? I mean, I, well, she wasn't she wasn't the ma she wasn't the main. Wasn't she at that one? But she was there. She, she yeah, was yeah, there. Okay, well, you can't be you can't feel that way and, and really be in the same room as Suella Braverman. I'm sorry. I'm sure she's a nice person, but yes. like she's, politically she's not. But it's interesting. Anything to do with it's me? In, well, the, well the, you might be interested to know that the biggest applause of the whole three-day conference was when Tony Daniels and Theodore Dalrymple, oh yeah, season, I know, yeah. yes, um, uh, said that the Conservative Party, for the way it's governed in the last 13 years, should be thoroughly ashamed of itself. There was a, there was an yeah. odd, there was an odd mismatch 
at the conference. It was fantastic for people to say this in 2023, but um, but but I was saying it in. Sure. In two th I remember I, I, it's burned on, yes. on my cerebral cortex. I went to a <laughs> conference or something. What was it called? I don't know, one of the, uh, the Bruges group. Yes. Uh, they had a fringe meeting. I think it was the last time I ever went went within the security perimeter of a Tory conference. <laughs> They had a fringe meeting <laughs> in Manchester, yeah. and I went along and I said that you that the there was no hope to be had in a David Cameron victory, yes. even if he even if he could get one. That the Conservative Party was irrevocably now uh, devoted to the destruction of conservatism, and that the best thing that could happen to it would be its defeat. And you've heard of global warming. Uh, I experienced global cooling in that room. Oh, the, the temperature of the place <laughs> dropped to about minus forty yes. Fahrenheit. Yes. And I was given what I believe is called the raw prawn. And <laughs> the number of people who have come up to me since then and said, Do you know, you're, you're right. absolutely yeah. right, mm -hmm. is infuriating because I say I have the same message in the world. Why didn't you work it out yeah. then? Yes. If, if, if in 2010 enough conservatives had boycotted the camera and Blairization of the Tory party, uh, so that it failed, not it, it did fail to win the 2010 election, a thing people have forgotten, so that it failed catastrophically to win the 2010 election and collapsed and died. Mm -hmm. We might actually have had an opportunity to build a Conservative Party out of what still remained of conservatism in this country. Mm. But in the 13 years since, so much less now exists of conservatism that if, if the Conservative Party collapses now, uh, then I very much doubt we have the materials uh, to build anything yeah, see, with I, I, any I, use. And it, 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 it was, there was, these, these things have time. I mean, Talleyrand says treason is about dates, yes. but so is politics. You, to be against the Conservative Party at a conference in London in 2023 is frankly of no use at all. You had to be against the Conservative Party in 2010. I, could, I went round other columnists, Conservative columnists on, 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 on newspapers begging any, I said, I just mm. need one of you, just one other person, mm. to say what I'm saying, and it will and it, and it will have some resonance. They would not do it. Mm. No, no, no. The Tories, we've got to get Gordon Brown out. And I said, why? <laughs> uh, it, actually, Gordon Brown's probably more conservative than David Cameron. Certainly, on the on the European single currency, he was. And w why is it so urgent to get them out now? And why is it so urgent to get David Cameron in, mm. who has declared himself to be the heir to Blair? Why do you want another Blair? And they would not. I could get nowhere. I don't dispute that. I nearly had an apoplexy at that stage, and that was the <laughs> point at which I completely gave up politics. I don't dispute. I could not. I could not stand it anymore. I could not bear uh, the the endless disappointment and destruction of hope that, that, that being engaged in politics have. And that's why, sure. from that day to this, I will say the same thing over again. I couldn't care less. I just observe and laugh. Yes. It's over. And, and, and for all those who are saying, "Well, actually, no, look, it's been terrible," then you say, "Too bad." You know yes. the old Scottish joke yeah. about the about the, the the Calvinist pastor. No, no. Well, he's uh, he, he, eventually, after many years of preaching to his fairly recalcitrant congregation, they're all they're, they're all they all die, and they find themselves down in hell, looking up, and there's their, their pastor looking down in know, heaven, yes. and they and, and, and then they say, oh. Pastor, we did. We didn't. You can. He said, "Well, you can new," <laughs> and that's pretty much my view. You can new. You know now. I told you. You didn't pay any attention. Pay attention to me now, okay? Uh, but it's too late to do anything about the Tory party. To be clear, that opportunity yeah. happened and was thrown away. I wasn't meaning to heap praise on you know the, the older people present in the room who were, who were bemoaning I'm, the Conservative I'm, I'm Party. I'm saying there is. It, it, I'm really pleased if Anthony Daniels is saying the Tory party is bad, but it's too late. I understand. But what I'm trying to say is that. When you say that, well, if they're going to, a, if young people are going to a conference where Suella Brabham's there, yes. I'm saying she's not the main draw, given the fact that that, no, she was that, there. Appla that applause is. She was there. Any, any any member of this government should have been should have been refused entry. I think, I think so. I think so too. And, I, mm -hmm. and I, I I wrote as much about it uh, at, at the time. But the, the the real thing that what I found interesting about it, and look, you maybe maybe you're right. Maybe your hope is lost. But it it, 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 it it's it's rather a um, a difficult message for for young people who love this country and do want, and, and, and do want to reverse this it's cultural revolution. It's a very revolution. difficult message, but it's it's a truthful yeah. one and I can't give them any other. But do you not think that the, the sort of people who you were rubbing shoulders with in, in the 1960s would also have, uh, I mean, you, you maintain in your writing that they've had a huge influence on the culture despite being incredibly marginal and seemingly unimportant oh, in the 1960s. No, 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 Why no, can't no, a, no, a Gramsci counter-revolution counter of sorts point, They all went off. They all went off into the 
into the professions. Later, they did. Yes. No, then this is they went off into in, particularly into education, but also into the into the BBC and the newspapers and the civil yes. service, yes. and the and the legal profession. They went off into those things, and they didn't. They, 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 very few of them had taken their Marxism and Leninism as seriously as I did. Yes. And I, I I really did take it. And I I I even read my dialectical materialism. I was <laughs> I. I Took, I, I, I read Lenin. I was serious about it as being a revolutionary of that kind. Most people had a much more, um, uh, much more of a, of a general brush with it, and so they had less, uh, they had less baggage to get rid of, and they could adapt their student revolutionary position into a more general cultural revolutionary position. Yes. Most of them probably haven't read Antonio Gramsci sure. either, but they're fulfilling his they're fulfilling his his scheme of the yes. hegemony of of, of, of left wing ideas becoming so great that in the end the, the society has to change. You know, Gramsci went to the Soviet Union in the twenties and, and said the 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 working class of, of Western Europe will never ever accept this. It's hopeless. Yes. It's a disaster. Uh, we have to find some other way. And that that was the really clever people in. Trotskyism in, in the in the early 70s were the, were the ones who were discovering Gramsci yes and on the continent of course this was the, the, the Euro communism which originated in the Italian Communist Party which was Gramsci's party uh, and they developed after 1968 a wholly different attitude towards what the revolution would be and it was you don't need the to seize the railway station exactly. and the post office anymore you seize the the, 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 the primary school classroom and the, and, and the television studio and, yes. and, and they did they went off and did that and I, I because I'd taken it more seriously precisely because I'd taken it more seriously found it, it rubbed much harder against the experience of real life that I then had and I abandoned it Mm. So, but my point is, why can't we do that? Why can't we, on on the right, younger people who, as I say, well, going to the, going to these conferences, and as, as I say, Suella Braverman is not the main draw. People who are interested in your work, interested in conservative ideas, feel as though they've been cheated out of an inheritance which was rightly theirs. Why can't we, in that same using those same Gramscian tactics, and 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 engineer a counter revolution? There's nothing of like sorts? enough of you. Yeah, but it didn't That's take many. It didn't take many of them. They weren't the majority. No, of it did general. take many of them. It, it, the, 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 the interesting thing, think they was, were the majority? The interesting thing was, I think they were because what you, you, the, the the actual active members of and participants in the Trotskyist sects yes. at the time, although it got quite large at one stage, I would say around about seventy-two, it, we had we, we had an enormous increase in membership. But that wasn't the point. The point mm. was that practically, you know, I could I could go and speak in favour of whatever it was at the student union in New York, and I would know that most mm. of the room was on my side. Mm. In a general, not organised, not ideological way, they were on my side, and those were the people who went off and uh, and, and became the the new generation of teachers and broadcasters and lawyers and all the rest of it. Mm. That's where they went. If, if you think especially teachers, above all things, teachers. If you think it's hopeless, um, what what advice would you give to those young right wingers who are at now? Get I, out I, of here! Leave. I keep saying, leave. leave, leave there's there no. It doesn't matter. It's the action is not is, is not. An, I'm not suggesting people leave so they can go and pursue conservatism. I'm saying they should leave to avoid the wrath to come, that because precisely because this has been such a comfortable, prosperous. Uh, law governed uh, civilized society its collapse is going to be particularly terrible mm -hmm. to be part of uh, so much will be lost and quite quickly all it needs is a really serious economic shudder would you and, I, and, and, and that, that that will knock almost everything off uh, off the rails the sorts of people whom uh, in Eastern Europe whom Roger Scruton used to visit in the in the 1980s and uh, in the 19, late 1970s and 1980s would you have advised them to have left Czech Czechoslovakia Hungary well, they couldn't could they? Well, if they if they it had, wasn't if, an option if they had been able it, it wasn't an option if they you had been able to would you, you advise them to become emigrants no, but it didn't I mean it wasn't it, the whole I traveled in those regions at that yes. point as well it wasn't an option you couldn't get out well certain people did I, well, well it was hard yeah it was difficult. for most people it wasn't available but in principle would you have advised them to leave I don't know. I was. I didn't ask my opinion. <laughs> I mean, it was. We would, I'll tell you what. The um, they mentioned it a turnaround. At uh, that stage, years. I knew so much less about uh, about the world than I did when I first encountered those countries. I was just beginning a proper learning process. The point is that I mean, people. Uh, again, you may not approve of Fidesz in, in every respect. You may not approve of, of, of some of the people running Hungary at the moment. People well, like no, I don't. And the maybe you don't. But, but ne nevertheless, they found themselves in in, in 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 a nightmarishly marginal position in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And they, 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 you know, th there was a catechism culture there, fed by intellectuals like Roger Scruton. And now they're now they're in government. I just I I I, w I wonder how final 
uh, our defeat is and, and whether it's really... Well, I've, seen, so I've become much more interested in the eternal than the temporal as life mm. has gone on anyway, so it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much that there are temporal political defeats. I don't, I, I don't care as much anymore. Mm. I just don't. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't the. Uh, it isn't to me the, the the absolute heart of the matter. Yes. Well, what keeps you going then? I mean, well, I, obviously the eternal. But you do take an interest in the temporal. I mean, you. I mean, you, well, you, it's know, it's you write books about drug decriminalization and what a disaster well, it would be to make it de jure instead of just de facto. I wrote that about ten years ago. Right. Eleven years ago. Grammar schools. You wrote about that as well. Yeah, I wrote about that. Read the book. Read what it says. Read what it says. It's pretty negative. I've read it. We're done for. It's more negative towards the There's nothing you can't. You could not put it back because by destroying the schools, we destroyed any possibility of ever restoring them. So you just view yourself as as the detached obitrist of Britain, and that's all there is to it. Somebody, somebody has to do it. I don't want it to be done by the Chinese. I think it should be done by somebody sympathetic who used to like used to like the place. You know, you don't want your obituaries written by your enemies. <laughs> no, but I don't. I do, it, that's yeah. I am the obituaries to the country. That's 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 what I do. I, there's a lot of fun yeah. to be had in it. I don't. So that's like the pessimism is far more yeah. enjoyable uh, than optimism. And people should understand. I don't have any complaints about my life. I've had. A, I've had. A, uh, absolutely if, if I hadn't jumped over the traces when I was about 15, sure. I'd, I'd now be retiring as a junior professor of history in a, in a university in the East Midlands. <laughs> as it is, uh, I've had one of the most enjoyable lives anyone could okay. possibly have had. And, but it's been a it been it, it, it it's been it's been a it's been a life where you've been constantly engaged in losing battles. So maybe maybe we would derive pleasure and satisfaction from such a life as well. Well, uh, maybe you would, but prove me yeah. wrong if you want to. I don't. I wouldn't at all object to being proved wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, go ahead, do it if you can. But I I, did, I just don't see anything yeah. in, in in material realities that suggests that I'm mistaken about it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and in fact, we had, there's a, a event a couple of weeks ago I read about that the British government was borrowing money. Uh, to pay interest on its debt, and yeah. I thought, well, that's it, really. Then I, there's, oh, no, that's there's, yes. there's no, that is the end. Yes. You've had it now, and I think the material, the material foundations of the society have now become so. It's not. It, it didn't happen that way round. Uh, we could probably, st we probably still had reasonably sound material foundations until the Blair lot came in, uh, but they plunged us into such a colossal mm. debt that I think it's probably irrecoverable. And, and and it will just go again. Then then when the the COVID panic uh, happened and they, they 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 doubled and doubled and doubled that, then that was it. Mm. It's one of the, my main objections to the COVID panic was the economic illiteracy of it. And I saw you on Question Time with with with, with people like Jacob Rees Mogg. Yeah, well, that's afterwards yeah. of course. Yeah, I couldn't course. get on Question Time during the. It's panic. difficult. But, but <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. It's impossible. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, sorry, Evan, I, 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 what, yeah. what I'm saying is that uh, even people who um, present themselves like Rees Mogg as you know reliable fiscal yeah. conservatives prove themselves to be utterly worthless in that in that very sorry episode, well, I, and I found that very. Difficult. I mean, I know maybe you, he opposed it. I mean, but the, the, the truth was, what, the, the, the mass resignation would have, would have been the only mm. would have been the only thing. There's only one resignation on principle in two years, and it was David Frost in December of 2021. That's 20, right, might have been yeah. 20, no, 20, yeah, December of 2021. Anyway, sorry. What do you what do you make of the uh, the time after pandemia and the, the hysterics that came around from COVID? It seems like there has been a, a global chilling in the fact that nobody is really willing to acknowledge what they were up to for the better part of three years mm -hmm. and how terrified so many people became and how they abandoned their principles only to find it when they had well, I think pots what, and pans to we, bang around. <laughs> what you can get from the from the response to it is, is a strong sense that it will happen again. Mm, yeah, I agree. Completely. I'm quite sure yeah. that something similar will happen within the next 10 years, which will be just as crazy. And maybe yeah. with different pretexts. And maybe lasting a lot longer. Yeah, once you lock down once, it always hangs over your head. Of course it, it can will. be, yeah. be deployed again. There, is, no, you can, you, there are some sort, sorts of virtue which once lost, mm. you've lost forever. And I, the, my belief that the, the, in this country there was, a, that there was a population which would resist yes. uh, that, sort of, uh, that sort of authoritarian government has, has been completely destroyed. I, I no longer believe it. It's not true. So mm. before, that's interesting then. So before, 20, tw before 2020, you did still that, think that, 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 that the British people. I hoped it existed. I thought sublime that, instincts mentioned. I before thought, that for stuff. instance, the general response to I when the to, I thought September the eleventh two thousand and one was a very interesting warning. Hmm. People were incredibly willing to be to, to, to be sheepdog into identity cards. That's yeah, and all and and yeah. the ridiculous. I mean, I, I would go through. I used to travel. I, f I can't bear to travel by air anymore. Pretty much, I very occasionally do it. Mm. 
but I would be standing in these queues and they'd be x-raying my testicles in some <laughs> weird machine and then take your shoes off to, and if I muttered yeah. even, even Anything, muttered under my, yeah, under yeah. my breath the people around me would say why are you complaining yeah. do you not want to be safe <laughs> uh, what if they and, and the great question what if they had a plane you could get on without all this stuff I said I'd be on it <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> which they the couldn't believe, and the response they couldn't believe it yeah. that anybody could not could be skeptical about this. I realised people accept this this bilge, and, uh, and and they don't even find it funny. And then there was this wonderful thing that was introduced uh, about about three years ago. There was a news item which I thought was one of the funniest I ever seen was they were going to introduce airport style security at prisons. Think, 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 yeah, yeah. think about it for a moment. Just think about it for a moment. Yes, for the p these for visitors entering prisons. I, I think for anybody entering prisons, mm, but yeah. I mean, the, 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 for, for many, many years, it had been tougher to, to get on an airplane with <laughs> an innocent human being oh, going about his yeah, business yeah. than yeah. if you were a convicted prisoner yeah. going to his reward. I see. So if, we're, if we're going to be retrospective then in our analysis rather than rather than forward looking, except. For Both, look I should have thought. Well, no, well, yeah, but look, looking, <laughs> looking towards doom, though, so it sounds at least. Yeah. Um, why do you think it is? I, it, was, it occurred to me the other day that. so. I don't want to pick on anyone at random, but Sajid Javid, for, for instance, has held six ministerial posts in the last 13 years. Yeah. And I'm pretty confident that... Could you name any of them? Well, uh, Home Secretary, Health Secretary, uh, um, Good. Education Secretary. Yeah, I, couldn't, okay. no, I can't remember. It, it doesn't really matter, I you're right. I, can, I, can't, I used to know yeah. the name and constituency MP. of every member of parliament. Yeah. Now I couldn't could care. It, but it's, I, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that were you to be ditched, for example, by the Mail on Sunday and have your column, column replaced by one by Sajid Javid, Sales would take a serious hit, and yet he's had. It's the nicest thing anyone <laughs> said to me all day. <laughs> all day, all day. But it, it's this sort of thing which makes you wonder: Why ha do you think that you haven't had more of an influence on the party when clearly the sorts of values that you represent, the sort of I think you've called it British Gaulism before, is incredibly popular in the country at large, and yet the sort of you know, t technocratic social and economic liberalism, liberalism represented by Javid isn't inspiring at all to anyone. Parties represent the elites of the, to the, to yeah. the population, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. And the elite doesn't want that for some reason, and it's because again they were educated uh, I, by comparison with most of the people who are now in the political elite of this country in the Westminster bubble. Mm. Uh, I am uh, I am uh, sort of Einstein in, in terms of education. I know perfectly well that my own education is hugely lacking, full of the most gigantic gaps in literature, history, culture, and philosophy. I know I'm really badly educated by the standards of my own childhood and adolescence. I know this. But by comparison with these people who are coming out of Oxford and Cambridge now, uh, as I say, I'm fantastically well educated. This is one of the things that worries me. <laughs> I, mean, I know, I know that, 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 that the country is in the hands of people who know nothing, and in any case, of course, are stupid. And this is the other thing that any study of history will so rapidly convince you of. The role of stupidity in human existence is colossal. <laughs> yeah. It keeps on coming up. It's people are well. just thick, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you have to factor it into any yeah. lesson of what's going to happen next. And I think the 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 COVID episode and the national the national panic scheme is the most perfect example of this. And what what Johnson, who poses as a sort of classicist, mm. faced with a not particularly complicated choice between doing a, a proportionate and intelligent thing and going crazy. Went crazy, mm. even with the, the the example of Sweden just over the horizon. Mm. Mm. Well, they were saying, "Why are you doing this? You, 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 why why are you joining all the the the, 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 the lunatics when it's perfectly possible to do it without?" Yeah. And they, they they just went for it. It was worse even than that because, as we saw in the WhatsApp files, not only were they not interested in the Swedish model, uh, people like Matt Hancock were actively interested yeah. in discrediting it. Yes. When, when he sent messages yeah. to, I think in the, in a group chat, he said. Give me six reasons why the Swedish model mm. fails, not whether the Swedish model yeah. fails. There was no intellectual curiosity to be. To be well, to I have to say all. the words Matt Hancock and intellectual curiosity don't go together <laughs> in any in any puzzle that I can think of. Yes, yeah, he did seem to be uniquely vindictive in kind of how he went about it. You could tell he was really enjoying a lot of the uh, the, power. the power that had been given to. Well, that people was do enjoy power. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of the reasons why so many people shouldn't be allowed anywhere near it. Yes. Just a, a simple test actually is how do people behave behind the wheel of a motor car? 
mm. uh, which is the, the, the most power most people get in their lives. It transforms mm. probably 70% of drivers into, in, into slavering maniacs, <laughs> shouting and hooting, and it's, it's very bad. Behind, behind the wheels it just gives muscle. you an you know, when Acton said oh, the power tends to corrupt, he obviously was accepting some people, yeah. you know, or absolute power, power corrupts, corrupts, absolutely. Corrupts, corrupts absolutely, but normal power it doesn't corrupt everybody, but people who, you know, like that, they shouldn't be in that area. Yeah. Is that Sorry. Uh, t to shift slightly, um, I was reading a recent essay you wrote about a recent book that you wrote, uh, The Phony Victory, mm -hmm. World War II, uh, where you referred to World War II, maybe you can give us a bit of a, a history lesson here, as the national religion of the United Kingdom, which I thought was the NHS, uh, but I'm well, happy to be corrected on this. Nigel also made a clever remark about the NHS, that, people, that, that it, is a kind of, it is a kind of faith, but actually uh, the the, the whole, if you're looking for a kind of scripture and theology, the scripture of what is good, who are the saints and, uh, and who are the sinners, uh, what are the, the great parables of good and evil, they all come. And this is particularly strong in my own generation, but it still persists. They all come from the Second World War. Mm. And the epitome of goodness and courage is, is, is Churchill. The epitome of evil is Hitler and the Nazis. And the epitome uh, of cowardice is Chamberlain. Uh, indeed, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's, there's, there's quite enough truth in the scripture for it to be very effective. Uh, but also, it it it, it 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 hugely overestimates the importance and success of this country in that war, mm. and that's one of the reasons why we have so many of the troubles that we do. If this country would accept, I think Dennis Healy once made this point, and he was right. It's another ex-Marxist. If this country would accept that it's basically just an offshore Austria, small, prosperous, civilized, beautiful landscape, uh, you know, with the, a, a vast cultural and imperial history which it, uh, which you can take pleasure in, but which has come to an end, they'd be a lot happier than continuing to believe that it's somehow a great power. Mm. And we still maintain, for goodness sake, an enormous baroque uh, superpower, cold war, nuclear missile system. You know, I, actually, since we've spent so much money and trouble on developing nuclear weapons, I wouldn't get rid of them. Mm. But we don't need I mean, Israel, which is a country much more under threat uh, than we are, I maintains mean, a far smaller and more modest uh, nuclear arsenal than we do. Why is it that we do this? Mm. Why, in a country, can look at a map, why in a country which isn't remotely as big as, as, as France and has an incredibly crowded landscape, do we build high speed rail? It does, it's, 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 it's an absurdity. We don't need it. It's not, it doesn't fit our, our landscape or our, or our population uh, spread or anything. It's, it's, but we do, it's grandeur, mm. a grandiosity, in fact, uh, is a huge part of our politics. And again, this ridiculous thing where the, the British Ministry of Defence gives press conferences on the war in Ukraine. This is like the, the Italian defence ministry giving press conferences on the war in the Falklands in 1982. <laughs> what is, why? What is it, what, uh, most people in Britain don't know where Ukraine is, mm. uh, or, 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 or anything about it at all. It's not. It's 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 not a it's it's not a British national interest. Mm. And if it weren't for the if, if it weren't for our membership of NATO, what what would, what connections would we have with Russia? We barely trade with Russia. We have very few citizens in Russia. We have no common border with Russia. We have no territorial dispute with Russia. Uh, we, 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 we know almost nothing about it. So, so why are we a, effectively at war with it? It reminds me of the old days of the Peter Simple column in the 1960s Daily Telegraph, uh, when Michael Wharton was doing it, where he invented a, a war between Sweden and what was then Yugoslavia, which couldn't ever get underway because the two, the two countries really couldn't find each other. <laughs> It, it is it is laughably ridiculous. If, if I as we, we we think it, we think we still act as if we were a great power. So the other day, and this is another was a wonderful news item, which I think is worth treasuring. The other day we bought quite a large number of six-inch howitzer shells from Germany, so that we could give them to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> a nice gift. <laughs> I, I, I mean, just ponder yeah, yes. ponder this event, and no doubt we bought them with money which we borrowed. From who knows who? Mm. Uh, how, how does this? Um, and, and, and we also we, we we take part in this war in Ukraine, while we couldn't even defeat the IRA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I, if I must confess my ignorance yet again, I was wondering if maybe you guys could explain to me 
What is the uh, the quote unquote special relationship? It doesn't exist. It's a fantasy. Because I with mm. with America, because I spend all of my life essentially mm. in America. I've never heard about this, so it seems like a very one way relationship. It doesn't exist. It's a it's, it's a complete myth. And, it, 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 and when I went to live in Washington D.C. In, in the early 1990s, I discovered very quickly uh, that it didn't exist, and that it was something which. <laughs> the White House was to be a bit baffled. There would the, the, the be arrangements for the visit of a British Prime Minister, and, they, mm. and the President, whoever he was, would be saying, "You've got to mention the special relationship." <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, what? <laughs> the special? Re what? Yeah. We'll tell you later. It doesn't. You've got to mention it. Yeah. And it, it is. It, there is. There is no such thing. And was one of the points of my book, the Phony Victory, is the is the uh, description of the true relationship between the two countries. Perfectly properly, the United States is a separate country from Britain and doesn't, doesn't regard us as anything particularly special. Uh, the, the, special the, the language of special relationship, it, am I right in saying that that dates from Churchill's speech at Fulton? I think it's before then. I think he, I think he may have come up with it before, but certainly it's a Churchillian, a Churchillian thing, invention. Mm. Yes. But it, it doesn't, I mean, around about that time, uh, the Americans were saying they couldn't find the nuclear treaty we'd signed with them, mm. uh, therefore they wouldn't share nuclear secrets with us, which mm. is not a very special thing to do. And, yes. and then, s and then, uh, but they held and they held nuclear base. They 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 uh, set they laid nuclear bases in England as well without parliamentary approval. Is well, that correct? Sure, in I the nineteen fifties and sixties, all kinds of stuff. But yes. they, but of course, the, our relationship is actually defined by a very simple fact, which nobody knows, and which when I pronounce, people say that's not true, but it is. In nineteen thirty four. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland stopped paying its First World War debt to the United States. Mm. And it's enormous, that debt. It's absolutely colossal. And, and what it would be now, if, it, if, if anybody could calculate it, would, would be so huge. It would probably, if you, if you piled it up in banknotes, it would cover the whole of the city of London. It's colossal. And we stopped paying it. We defaulted on debt. You still get people in the city of London saying, Britain has never defaulted on this stuff. Well, we did. We defaulted on that one. Hmm. And everybody in America remembers it and knows about it. And it was hugely influential during the, the, the period immediately before and after the outbreak of the Second World War. But we deny it. And if you say it in public, it was, no, 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 it's not true. We did. But it's, 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 it's easily factually establishable. There's a book recently been written about it. It's the most fascinating thing about our, our relationship. Our special relationship with America is that we're hugely in debt to them. We'll never pay it off. And they can't forget it and we try to. Yes. Is this book That's special. Is this book Adam Tooze's the No, it's not. The no, it's not Adam Tooze's Deluge. There is a, I forget the name of the book, but it is actually a, it's specifically devoted to the debt. I see. I see. I think it I may think be mentioned Tews, Tews, it may be mentioned in Tooze, it, yeah. but it's it, the, there's the recently been a book and I, I can't because I wasn't expecting this to come up, I can't give you the title, no, but it's, mm. it, is, uh, it, it is the case that we have this debt and yeah. uh, we will never pay it off. It's physically impossible to do so, and uh, and that was basically the end of us as a serious power. Yeah, I mean, with the ambition of trying to tease at least some hopeful notes out of you, it might be a quixotic move. Uh, but I mean, what wh what is the in, so in twenty twenty you were comp not necessarily confident, but you were there was a residual hope that a, a conservative defeat might set this country back on the right path. What not are the what really? Are I went through the motions in twenty okay. twenty. It was twenty ten. Sorry, sorry, I meant twenty ten. I meant twenty twenty ten. I thought it was it was possible. Just, just possible. What are the crucial differences between 2010 and 2024 say, in what, your mind? What was left of Conservative Britain has, has, has been uh, 10 years. In, in concrete all, terms, what does that there's mean? There's a lot of destruction. Well, I, culturally, I, there are so many things that people no longer do or think or say that, that they would have done or thought. Is that the Cultural Revolution never sleeps. Hmm. There's always something new, uh, particularly in the, 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 the attack on, on marriage, the attack on the supremacy of Christianity, the attack on rigorous education. Uh, the attack on the teaching of, or even the knowledge of serious history, uh, all these things are unending. And the people who uh, were immune from them die mm. uh, year by year, and the people come up in society who are not even aware that these things are controversial. Mm. So that's gone, uh, and the, the, the economic status of the country shrivels, the ability to, to, to recover. Uh, one of the things which, which a seriously conservative country would need to do, for instance, would be to rebuild itself as a manufacturing economy, something we were told in the 80s didn't yeah. matter, and now everybody says it does. And yes. Where is that going to come from? Yes. Uh, admittedly not from the conservative MPs present, but a lot of those themes were touched upon at this recent, recent National were, Conservatism you know. Conference. It's a, sh it's a shame you weren't invited, even if you might have cast a slight cloud over proceedings with your well, you prognostications. Talk about them, but you have to tell me how on earth you would set about if you were, mm -hmm. if you if, if you came into government having yeah. astonishingly won an election on a program British Girlism, and they were sitting. But you down. think you think British Girlism is popular there in the country at large? Well, I think the idea is popular, yeah. but it's not represented by any party. So, uh, unless in, in 
the, in our two-party system, if if you if an idea is not represented by other than two parties, yes. then it, it cannot flourish. It doesn't. Have, this is this is the great paradox of the referendum. Yeah. The referendum divided the country along its true divisions, but, but, and, but not really and, parties. and it produced a small yeah. majority for for uh, for what I, I would call something. I mean, I the, I, I I was totally against it. And I'm, I, against the referendum yeah. being held. Yeah. And I I played no part in it, and I've. I've I thought it would create a constitutional crisis, which it has and which continues to this day. Yeah. But the, the, it is nonetheless a fact that the referendum, by detaching very large numbers of, of Labour voters from their party, mm. uh, particularly the socially conservative Labour voters, gave them free reign. It not actually, to vote it actually demonstrated yeah. that there was a, there was a majority. I always said, I said for years, if you set up a, a Peter Hitchens party and a Polly Toynbee party, then you have a much a much better division than. Than the Labour and Conservative parties, which increasingly reflect uh, divisions in the country, which ceased to matter in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to have a proper adversarial system where the two parties were mm -hmm. genuinely uh, opposed to each other and, uh, and and would oppose each other in Parliament and also genuinely represented uh, competing trends in the country, that would be the way it would go. Yes. Uh, but and, and the and the referendum showed completely. I, the one part I enjoyed about it was that it showed completely that I was right about that. that such, such a provision <laughs> existed and that my side could actually command a majority if, if given the chance, but otherwise I hated the whole thing. Is this you announcing that you'll be starting a new party then? No. <laughs> I mean, new pa anybody can start a new party, but new parties bear as much relation to, to real parties as, as toy trains do to... To, um, to <laughs> the locomotives. Yeah. Well, no, to the French railway system. Oh, the, 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 the British <laughs> one is, is a sort <laughs> yeah. of toy train set. It's not really a <laughs> railway system anymore, but the, it, they, the, it's not really... Anybody can start a party. Yes. I mean, William Clouston, the Social Democrats, is quite a noble yes. uh, but doomed attempt, but it's not a party because it can't... You can't win elections until you've mm -hmm. got until one of the parties in the two-party system collapses. Mm -hmm. These two corpses, uh, stiffened by rigor mortis, will carry on holding each other up <laughs> forever. They yes. are both dead parties. Yes. They're kept alive by uh, by by uh, state subsidies to, to the opposition, uh, by dodgy billionaires, uh, and by the broadcasting rules, yes. which mm -hmm. give hopelessly uh, excessive. Uh, broadcasting rights to the existing parties and, and close the door to anybody else. Well, Peter you could afford, you could change those, and you might get somewhere. But in, in, but even then, one of the parties has to collapse, and generally, to make things collapse, you have to kick them. And I kicked the Conservative Party for a long time, and it didn't collapse. And yes. If it collapses now, well, sorry. Perhaps yeah. we can find some people Too to pile on. Too late. <laughs> well, you ju I, I will take some uh, pleasure from the fact that you just did say we, we, you might get somewhere, which I, th I think is a bit mm. about as good yeah, as I'm I did say so you might know. get somewhere, but it might not be anywhere very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Hitchens, it's been predictably enlightening. Thank you very ah. much for coming <laughs> on to Program. Evan, thanks as ever. You've been watching Programs. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and we'll see you on the next one. Hello, if you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember, to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.